Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark out of Hurricane Track here. Friday now, the 13th of September, 2024. Hope your Friday the 13th is going quite well. We don't need any shenanigans this day, do we? Nope. Uh, I'm over in Tallahassee, Florida, making my way back home to North Carolina, where we got to start watching this other system off our coast. We'll get to that. Um, after a very strange Francine mission over there in Louisiana and Mississippi, on Monday, I'm going to produce a special video just going back over all the Francine stuff and especially about the stolen equipment, a very bizarre situation with that. And I'm going to show you all the details that we know about it. And then kind of like that very popular podcast, Crime Junkie, um, where they turn everything over to the audience that you know some something. Somebody saw something. Uh, let's see if we can figure out who did this because I bet you... Somebody caught it on their live stream, you know, in some form or another, and we can figure out who did this and, you know, let the internet do its thing once we figure it all out. And also, I will also talk about some of the things that I did wrong, mainly just trusting people. Oh, okay. Um, learn my lesson. But you know what? For today, let's focus on something really, really cool. And that is a major success that we had down in Mississippi with our dual camera systems that we had set up for the storm surge there in Waveland. So this is the first shot. This is the wide shot from our Nest Cam. It's hiding behind the little toolbar there. So this is the wide shot uh, over in Waveland, just down from the Silver Slipper. But what you can't see is there is another camera tucked right over here looking out this way. And it, too, can stream live but here's the thing, it can also record to an SD card internally. So we will no longer necessarily need to put out a live cam and a GoPro for fear of losing the network, things like that. That's why we would do that. The network goes down, we use Verizon to stream our stuff. I mean, everybody can figure this out. It's not hard. I'm not giving away, away secrets here. Uh, you got to put in the effort, though, if you're willing to do this. You're going to have to go big or just not do it at all, in my opinion. And we do. We go big. So we tried something different. This is the wide shot, waiting for that storm surge. This is mid-afternoon or so. And then here is the close-up shot. And it is extremely high quality because this is from the chip that recorded in 1080. This camera did not stream live. It was too close to the water and the signal in this part of Waveland is just not good to begin with. And so the wide camera over here, this is 10 feet up on a pole. So it's got a just enough signal to get that bandwidth out or needed to get the stream out. So this did stream live. It was shown for hours and hours on our YouTube feed and, of course, on Fox Weather. But this other camera uh, was not live because we just didn't have the bandwidth this close to the water and the bulkhead there was blocking everything. But it did record, as you can clearly see. So here it is later in the night, probably after midnight or so. Francine is well inland, but the storm surge did come into the Mississippi Sound in this part of Hancock County. And then there's the close-up shot. We've never done this before like this, where we literally juxtapose two different cameras and can switch between them there this will be incredible for our live coverage in the future. It'll be great for Fox Weather because they can have this in a split screen. Really, really innovative, really cool stuff with this new camera that was sitting right down here. And then, of course, the view that it had is that. In your face, point blank to those waves, just about a tablespoon of water or so in the camera, a little bit of seepage that still gets in. It's Mother Nature. What are you going to do? We do have some ideas about that, too, by the way. Simple stuff. But, yeah, it worked. I'm very, very happy about it. And a, a new era, a new uh, bit of innovation here to celebrate for our project because we want to be able to show people the impacts of hurricanes in different and unique ways that can be both curiosity-provoking, you know, like, wow, that's really interesting, get people thinking about it, but also to be helpful for the science side. Social science, that's a science and the meteorology, and just the science of storm surge and hurricane forecasting. And so we made a great leap forward with that. All right, so we'll deal with the, the very negative side of things in my update on Monday. 
the special video that I'm going to do where we talk about the theft of our uh, RM Young anemometer and the, the, the rest of the weather station components that somebody's got, and they're probably even watching this video right now. <clears throat> All right, how about that? All right, so <laughs> National Hurricane Center homepage, the title does say, what's next? So let's talk about it. We have Francine, post-tropical, sitting over um, the Arkansas-Missouri border area. And we'll look at this in more detail in a minute. And this little doodad down here, a very small, little weak low-pressure area over pretty much the uh, Northeast Caribbean. And then finally, TD7 has made it to Tropical Storm Gordon. It is sheared. It's a mess. I'll show you that in just a minute on satellite. Meanwhile, the remnants of Francine causing some flooding concerns here for parts of the southeast, so please pay attention to that if you're in and around the area. There could be some severe weather and even some of that tail end activity moving in. Not far from where I am here in Tallahassee, it's a little bit farther over, of course, but maybe some severe weather along the Panhandle area. It is the weekend, so if you're going down to the Florida Panhandle to enjoy the Gulf, just keep all this in mind. Be weather aware. We have to think about the weather and how it can impact us. That is the goal. That's what we try to do here with our project is spread the best information possible to get people to pay attention. All right, so let's look at it from the satellite perspective. The wide shot, there would be the remnants of Francine. And then there's some of that energy still trying to come in across the Gulf of Mexico. These tropical cyclones are hard to just, you know, get them to turn into nothing. They last and last if they can. Now we've got some energy that's trying to congeal in and around the offshore waters of North Carolina. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. This would be our very small system moving through the Northeast Caribbean. Some gusty winds, showers, a couple thunderstorms maybe with that, maybe some tank rain. But you got to watch it if you've got a small boat down there. Those gusty winds could be problematic for you. There is Gordon, and it is the height of hurricane season in a year that was supposed to be hyperactive, and Gordon is just sheared. You can see the upper-level winds peeling it apart right there. The low-level center is exposed in here. For the most part, weird stuff happening that is going to have to be looked at in the longer term. What went wrong? How did the hurricane machine break? which is great for coastal interests, obviously, but to build trust within science, when you screw up, you have to figure it out and get back on track, and lots of people will be working on that, I assure you. Hey, maybe it's not a solvable problem. Maybe Mother Nature and the weather is just so complex that even when we think we've got it figured out, we don't, and we just have to live with that. I think in science it's very appropriate and, in fact, needed for people to just sometimes say, I don't know. And right now, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But let's look at what we do know. We do know we've got this area trying to come together with possible subtropical characteristics. That's just a label, meaning it's more spread out. The energy's not as focused, that kind of stuff. Kind of a mix between a tropical system and a mid-latitude storm. So we call it subtropical. It happens up here in the subtropics and has, as I said, sort of a hybrid mix of characteristics. Looking at it on the vorticity perspective, a few interesting things. There's Francine's vorticity signature, what's left of Francine. There's the energy off the southeast coast. This is our little piece of energy in the northeast Caribbean. And there is the very well-defined vort signature, vorticity signature of Gordon. And... Um, We'll watch and see what this does. It'll just kind of mill around out over the open Atlantic, adding a few ace points, and that's about it. So what do the models show? Well, let's first of all refresh this so we can get the latest. And eh, we're out to five days. This is the wide perspective. Let's use blue to make it all stand out better. There is our energy off the southeast coast. We want to pay attention to that. And then we can just kind of look out here in this rectangle that I have drawn and see what goes on out there. And then you got the remnants of Francine sitting over here again, over Missouri and Arkansas. So let's just move this out frame by frame, and let's see what we get. Well, the GFS tries to develop, this is really interesting, count them now, one, two, three areas of vorticity south of this big old autumn-like high, 
that builds up over the northeast. And I'm going to tell you something really important here. This is interesting. If we had, this is just a hypothetical, if we had a strong hurricane coming up out of the Atlantic like this, that high pressure area right there would steer that thing right into the southeast United States. So the steering pattern is there. Lucky for us, the hurricanes are not. So just saying, we're very lucky this weekend because usually this time of September, we have something out there. It's just one of those things. That's the way it is at peak season. But yeah, weirdly enough, three areas of vorticity here. There's Gordon, and then this system down here ends up just shearing out and being nothing. So this is 66 hours. Just keep moving this forward. Now, as I said, if there was a hurricane down here, this high would block it. It is going to block the progress of this to not just go out to sea. So we have to watch this because the GFS is trying to focus that one piece of energy there and bring it in over my neck of the woods, literally, southeast North Carolina, early next week. So let's look at it on a close-up shot here. And again, let's focus on this area right in here. The energy is trying to focus in and bundle. Subtropical in nature, but the water temperatures, especially the Gulf Stream, still warm enough for it to acquire full tropical characteristics. Oh, i got to refresh this too. I forgot. Sorry. There we go. Um, so let's move this out into time. Again, very weird that you got all this energy sitting out here. If this doesn't happen and it's able to focus better right there, yeah, this could be stronger. So we do need to watch this. North Carolina Outer Banks, especially up at Rodanthe, very vulnerable right now. Houses fallen in the ocean over the last few years. And any kind of an east wind, we're getting towards a full moon. I do think we're going to have some pretty nasty impacts up here, even though the system won't be that strong. At the end of the day, remember, it is about the impacts, how it affects you, your community, not necessarily how strong it is and what we label it. we got to get away from that and think about this in a much bigger picture. And I know what I'm seeing here. This is interesting, and I'll be focusing on that when I get back home. Because, look, it does try to ramp up there, coming in real close to Wilmington, between Wilmington and Jacksonville, um, overnight Monday into Tuesday, something like that. And if we look at the lower wind field and so forth, uh, you know, nine, what is that, a 999? So certainly not strong, but that is not the point. The point is impacts, heavy rain, high surf, beach erosion, and you do not need a strong system to pile up the water in New Bern and Washington and get the ocean to really exact a toll on the Outer Banks up here. So we're going to be focusing on that very closely over the coming days. Water temperatures have cooled off real close to the shelf here, but not far offshore, especially the Gulf Stream, still 80 degrees plus Fahrenheit and you know definitely warm enough to support a tropical system. And again, my worry would be for the sounds, the rivers in here, the areas that, you know, like I said, New Bern, Washington, and so forth, the heavy rain potential, and the Outer Banks with the uh, Rodanthe area up here being most concerning for me. Uh, we've got a lot of friends up there, so we'll be in touch with them. All right, finally, water temperatures, really interesting, the overall pattern here. As we head towards the back end of September, eventually, in model world, we're getting there. The La Nina is coming on. I think we're going to be designating this as a La Nina, we being Noah, not me. I have nothing to do with it. But this is coming up. This is still very much warmer than average through here, cooling things off, as you would expect, in the northwest gulf. A little cooler shelf water than average near the southeast, but everything else is still there to potentially brew hurricanes as we go through the end of September and October and even into November. I think, as I've said in a couple videos in the past, we are done with any worries coming from out here, probably, never know for sure, and our focus is going to be much more in the western basin going forward, all right? All right, well, that'll about do it for me. Let's get back over to the title card so that I can exit, hopefully gracefully, and send you all on your way with a new update, new knowledge of what to look for in the tropics. All right, so from all of us at Hurricane Track, what a wonderful community we've got. Thanks to that community, we were able to accomplish what we did accomplish in Louisiana and Mississippi. And again, on Monday, 
two videos, one the regular discussion, and then the other one, that little post-mortem that I'm going to do where we dig in, especially to what happened to our equipment, and we'll turn it over to the Internet. Maybe you guys know who did it. All right? Have a great weekend. I will be around updates tomorrow and Sunday, especially since we're going to be tracking what's probably eventually going to be 94L, honestly, and we will uh, track that and be on top of it. All right? I'm Mark Sutter. Thanks for watching.